Yo, what it is, you two? It's your boy, Missy, coming back with another bullseye for tutorial here today on the channel. Highly requested, highly demanded, long awaited. I got it here for y'all today. It's going to be the Drake tutorial. Let's not waste no time. Let's get right into it right now. And let's get the listening. Okay. Sins. I got sins on my mind and some M's. Got a lot of M's on my mind and my friends. Yeah, I keep my friends on my mind. I'm in love. I'm in love with two girls at a time and they tens. That's why I got tens on my mind. I got M's. Got a lot of M's on my mind and my friends. Yeah, I keep my friends on my mind. Should repent. I need me some Jesus in my life. Amen. Sins. I got sins on my mind and some M's. Got a lot of M's on my mind and my friends. Yeah, I keep my friends on my mind. I'm in love. I'm in love with two girls at a time and they tens. That's why I got tens on my mind. I got M's. Got a lot of M's on my mind and my friends. Yeah. Okay. 100% accuracy. The Drake tutorial is here. So if you guys do like this video, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Any more artist ideas down below, go ahead and drop it. I'm more than happy to get to it. Let's get to these gems right now. And if you guys do want the tutorial, grab it in the link down below. Okay, so cool. You know with a guy like Drake, his sound is so revolutionary. Drake, when you think about the pinnacle of music, you always usually think about Drake because he's the perfect hybrid between a pop star and a rapper. Like, you know, Drake is just a very, very, very amazing character, you know. But over time, what I liked about Drake a lot is his sound always evolved and always changed. You know, Drake used a bunch of different microphones throughout his career, but the most best known microphone is usually that, that C800. So usually that trademark Drake sound is very breathy, very airy, very like he kind of got asked that very very airy breathy breathy sound you know that you could just hear every you know single gust of air coming out of his lungs type of sound and a lot of the times he's coming down to a bunch of different things so let's look at that so the very first thing i wanted to look at is the auto tune you know and with drake right here uh you know i tried to use the uh you know regular uh Antares auto tune but i went with the waves auto tune because it has a bunch of different scales so let's look at what it sounds like with and without the auto tune real quick scenes I got sins on my mind and some M's. So got a lot of M's on my mind and my friends. So yeah, I keep my friends on my mind. I'm in love. I'm in love with two girls at a time and they tens. That's why I got tens on my mind. I got M's. So got a lot of M's on my mind and my friends. So yeah, I keep my friends on my mind. Should People always ask me, Nick, how do you get a clean, clean, clean auto-tune sound? How do you go to zero retune speed, these high retune speed, and it sounds so natural? And look, honestly, this is where it goes beyond the equipment. Oh, you should not want to let a fucking box with wires and cables and metals be the reason why you sound good. Because if that's the case, then shit, a couple years from now, when AI, when AI sounds great, they ain't even going to need people. Sometimes you need a human being that can give a good performance. You know, I told you guys, download a piano app on your phone and, you know, you play around with the keys and you, and you start to learn scales, start to learn how to hit the notes of the beat with your actual voice and the actual words and everything like that. Because if you have an artist that comes into the studio and just literally does a good performance, the auto tune will sound smooth. No matter if you put it in the, the beginning or at the bottom, you know, like how I talked about in like kind of my, my world famous video that even auto tune, shout out auto tune hit me up about it. It. but you know what i said in that video is that sometimes you put auto tune on the end of the chain because it makes it sound cleaner but ultimately at the end of the day if you give a good performance your auto tune is going to sound clean so yeah i use the wave tune because it has a bunch of different scales and it kind of has like this blend type of knob i'm not sure if it's a blend knob but you get to have like aggressive settings and back it off a little bit which is what i like about drake's music okay cool uh let's bypass the whole chain with and without scenes I got sins on my mind and some M's. So got a lot of M's on my mind and my friends. Yeah, I keep my friends on my mind. I'm in love. I'm in love with two girls at a time and they tens. That's why I got tens on my mind. I got M's. Got a lot of M's on my mind and my friends. 
Yeah, I keep my friends on my mind, shit repent. So what we hear is a very smooth, very smooth Drake type of vocal. You know, Drake, he's known for being very smooth, even though he's bright, he's got that smooth swag, you know. So uh, the very first thing I want to talk about is a de -esser. You know, oftentimes when it comes to setting a de I like to look for, for example, like the word that has kind of like the most energy and use that to kind of set like how far is my de going to go. So usually I don't like my de to go anything past like six to eight because of the release time. So let's let's look into that a little bit more. Sins, I got sins on my mind and some M's. Got a lot of M's on my mind and my friends. Yeah, I keep my friends on my mind. I'm in love. I'm in love with two girls at a time. So as an engineer, I'm usually looking for the words with the most power. I'm feeling like a mechanic. I'm feeling like electricity. I'm stepping inside the mix. I'm stepping inside the house. I'm, I'm, I'm popping the, the top off the whip. And I'm trying to see where's the electricity at? Where's the battery at? Where's the starter? Where's the alternator? When I'm setting up my de because usually the words that have the most sibilance, you know, you got to pay attention to how the rapper's rapping, the transitions in between the words. Also, the tempo of the music. You know, if it's a fast song where he's you might have two S's that are back to back, right? And then the release time of the DSer might be too slow. So that's why people always complain about DSer. So here's a trick. If you want a little bit of better in DSing, you're going to have to use a different DSer. You know, a DSer I, I used to love to use a lot is the UAD Precision DSer. And these are DSers that are made for like the whole mix. This is a mastering grade DSer. So I'm not going to go too in depth into that, but you see this right here, speed, right? This is a DSer that lets you adjust the attack and the release. Oh, wow. Because the DSer is a compressor too, right? But it only works on the, you know, depending on the high end frequency if you want, or you could have it wideband. But look, another DSer that you could use to get that Drake mainstream vocal, you know, to not have that audible DSing is something like the Weiss DSer. And look, you go over here on the Weiss DSer and then you could adjust the attack and the release and the ratio and all that shit, you know, so you could get a smoother type of DSing. Although this plugin right here is a DSer and it costs like a hundred dollars. So, you know, you say you want those smooth vocals, you might possibly have to use that. You know, usually with DSers, I always try to put myself in a situation where my vocal is kind of already controlled, or at least I understand that the s's are not back to back you know before i put it on a deser because if the s's are back to back and you kind of like don't have the consonants controlled then you're going to start to hear the the release time of like if a rapper if he's trying to say that like that fast the deser might not be able to grab the next s fast enough and that's how you kind of get those artifacts okay so after that drake SSL channel. I love it because it's very smooth, very clean. I wanted to go with the Mr. Clean, squeaky clean, fabuloso type of pine saw type of vocal. So I went with something super clean like the SSL E channel. And of course, you know, I understand Drake has a bright vocal. So I'm not really doing too much boosting EQ, only just a dollop at the, you know, at a high shelf, just boosting up like the air, the air, the air. And, you know, not really doing too much boosting EQ using the natural brightness of the, um, you know, the artist. It's kind of like like I'm a chef and I'm working with scratch ingredients. I open up the pantry, which is the artist's voice, and I'm saying, okay, what do I already have right here? Rather than going to the supermarket and trying to get a bunch of other shit, I'm using what the artist already has. So I'm already, I'm just cutting out a little bit of body and you know just really kind of clearing things up, and that in itself makes it very clear and very mainstream. Sins. I got sins on my mind and some M's. Got a lot of M's on my mind and my friends. Yeah, I keep my friends on my mind. I'm in love. I'm in love with two girls at a time and they tens. That's why I got tens on my mind. I got M's. Now pay attention also using that um you know that SSL dynamic section. I love it so much because it actually adding a little bit of weight, a little bit of presence to Drake's vocals. So it's not like I'm trying to tame any piece. I'm using the color and the action of the compressor to give a little bit of solidity to Drake's voice because this is rap music and the 808 is hitting very hard. So sometimes you can use the uh, compressor kind of like an all-you-can-eat buffet and put a little bit of weight on the rapper's vocal. Telling the rapper, go ahead and eat whatever you want. Let the vocal get nice and fat. So at least when that 808 comes, through you know it doesn't just completely mangle the vocal okay after that we have the rvox doing the same function you know giving us a little bit of gating just to tighten up the vocal a little uh, compression for the presence as well sins i got sins on my mind and some m's got a lot of m's on my mind and my friends yeah i keep my friends on my mind i'm in love i'm in love with two girls at a time and they tens that's why I got 10s on my mind. I got M's. Got a lot of M's. 
So as you can see right there, we kind of took the vocal from being a soft a ball, a Play-Doh, into something that's just a, a solid cube, you know, a solid mass. After that, I like to use something like uh, the pop vocal preset on C4. Just really makes the vocal start to sound brighter. Using multiband compression, really attacking the roof, the roof, the very roof of the vocal right here and starting to like effectively boost the noise floor of the, the kind of like the ceiling of the vocal. So it makes everything really sound brighter without adding some of that harshness. Sins. I got sins on my mind and some M's. Got a lot of M's on my mind and my friends. Yeah, I keep my friends on my mind. I'm in love. I'm in love with two girls at a time and they tens. That's why I got tens on my mind. I got M's. Got a lot of M's on my mind and my friends. Yeah, I keep my friends. Basic REQ going in there, just boosting a little bit of just a delicate, delicate uh, bit of top on Drake's vocal as well, notching out a little resonance. So I already understand that Drake in himself has a bright vocal, so I don't need to do this boosting EQ. I can get it to sound mainstream by using what I already have. You know, that's kind of like life too as well. Sometimes in life, people are always trying to find cars or watches or whatever material ass shit to find fulfillment when that it might already be inside of you. You know, like true happiness, it might literally already be inside of you. Fulfillment. So the same thing applies to making music you know i always try to use what's already there rather than try to you know find some external stuff to add to it you know before you know what i mean if i do feel like i need to grab something like uh, a colored eq or something like that to to bring the brightness i will but usually i just try to use uh just what's already there and try to like you know cut it you know like i had some scissors and i'm cutting some you know uh puzzles or some squares like in elementary school you know scenes I got sins on my mind and some M's. Got a lot of M's on my mind and my friends. Yeah, I keep my friends on my mind. I'm in love. I'm in love with two girls at a time and they tens. That's why I got tens on my mind. I got M's. Got a lot of M's on my mind and my friends. Yeah, I Something that's very important is to also understand analog components. Usually things like tubes can help add a little bit of brightness. The LA-2A, a CL-1B, that's why people love it because it can add the brightness using the tubes inside of it rather than to use anything else, you know, because tubes have a very natural way of brightening things. You know, it's still bright but very smooth. A combination of somebody like Drake's vocal, which is already naturally bright, using something like tubes, I picked the Fairchild, you know, because it also gives it weight and it also brings Drake's vocals forward. That's something that you want with somebody like Drake who has a high voice that it can sometimes feel frail. So yeah, let's look. Sins. I got sins on my mind and some M's. Got a lot of M's on my mind and my friends. Yeah, I keep my friends on my mind. I'm in love. I'm in love with two girls at a time and they tens. That's why I got tens on my mind. I got M's. Got a lot of M's on my mind and my friends. So me just running it through the plugin itself sounded like I did a little bit of boosting EQ, but I didn't, you know. So that's why you got to understand the analog components. What does a transformer do? What does a, a tube do, you know? What does resistors and capacitors do? Like, you know, understanding that little shit will make you a beast, you know, because now you don't got to do all that extra work trying to boost this and then you do a little boosting EQ, but like, whoa, it sounds harsh now. I got to DS it and going back and forth where well, you could just use something like, you know, tube saturation. So that's a gem right there. After that, using the fresh air and I love this plugin plugin just it just gives that mainstream sound and it's using uh saturation so i usually like this because it kind of like takes out that that hunky frequency in itself you know what i mean and then the high air i like to go back and forth between them sins i got sins on my mind and some m's got a lot of m's on my mind and my friends yeah i keep my friends on my mind i'm in love i'm in love with two girls at a time and they tens that's why I got tens on my mind. I got M's. Got a lot of M's on my mind. And my friends, yeah, I keep my friends on my mind. Should repent. Okay, after that, what I did back to back is I used, uh, you know, because I only use one deesser, but everything is really starting to sound bright. I wanted to smooth it out with a little bit of these analog emulations, so I used the NLS console, my favorite preset, which is mic. You know, that in itself makes it bright, and I also use uh, J37 tape. So, I, you know, these two plugins together in themselves really started to smoothen out uh, Drake's vocal, you know. I'm treating the vocal like, you know, I'm in a situation where I'm just playing a little pottery. I'm just slowly, you know, bending the curve, bending the edges, and getting the vocal shaped out to the way I really want it to be using those analog plugins. Since 
I got sins on my mind and some M's. Got a lot of M's on my mind and my friends. Yeah, I keep my friends on my mind. I'm in love. I'm in love with two girls at a time and they tens. That's why I got tens on my mind. I got M's. Got a lot of M's on my mind and my friends. Yeah, I keep my friends on my mind. Shit. Sure. <laughs> so those two plugins, those two plugins gave me so much brightness. They gave me so much brightness. And you literally hear the difference from where we was at to where Drake was at. Literally two plugins. And that's how you should feel when you record yourself at the home. You're only a couple good moves away from making it sound good. You just can't get frustrated and quit. After that, of course, Drake, he had a little slap delay, a little uh, meta flanger on it. I mean, it's obvious if you hear the song. And I did a little bit of, uh, you know, just rolling off a little bit of that bottom so the delay can sound bright as well. Sins. I got sins on my mind and some M's. Got a lot of M's on my mind and my friends. Yeah, I keep my friends on my mind. I'm in love. I'm in love with two girls at a time and they tens. And understanding how to make things sound brighter as well as the proximity. Usually, if people can start to hear a little bit of like a little bit of room resonance or something like that, usually like a little bit more high end, you know, because a lot of the times consonants, they are the high mid energy. So sometimes if you could give them a little bit more consonants, they will perceive it as brighter sometimes. So I use the bright room preset going into a stock um, Arver preset, which is just like, uh, well, now I don't even want to pop up no more. Well, here it goes. But yeah, uh, a stock Arver going into another stock Arver. And that's kind of how like I use the reverb to just really like give me some of that emphasis on the high mids and a little bit of proximity uh, for Drake's uh, type of vocal. So let's look. Scenes. I got sins on my mind and some M's. Got a lot of M's on my mind and my friends. Yeah, I keep my friends on my mind. I'm in love. I'm in love with two girls at a time and they tens. That's why I got tens on my mind. I got M's. Got a lot of M's on my mind. Coming to somebody like uh, Drake's vocal, I'm trying to add a little bit of dimension, a little bit of depth. So I use something like the Waves uh, Auto-Tune real-time, and I put that into my doubler, and it kind of just, I don't know, it gives a little bit more width, but also dimension. It gives that a little bit of that crunching auto-tune sound that you hear a lot with artists like No Cap and Drake as well. And it really fits Drake's vocal a lot, so let's listen to it with and without. Sins. I got sins on my mind and some M's. Got a lot of M's on my mind and my friends. Yeah, I keep my friends on my mind. I'm in love. I'm in love with two girls at a time and they tens. That's why I got tens on my mind. I got M's. Got a lot of M's on my mind and my friends. Yeah, I keep my friends on my mind. Shit all right cool so we understand that and after that we had the uh, ssl channel doing a little bit of parallel compression uh, a little bit of parallel limiting adding a little bit more density to drake's vocal but the release time is a little bit different so i'm kind of blending that in adding a little bit of sense of urgency because when you got somebody like drake that's all smooth at the end of the day you got to understand the genre this is still rap music we still wanted to punch you in the mouth you know but drake he's he's a nice guy so he punches you in the mouth softly you know what i mean but still as an engineer i still gotta help it cut through and Parallel compression, parallel limiting, a little bit of quicker release, help me. Sins, I got sins on my mind and some M's. Got a lot of M's on my mind and my friends. Yeah, I keep my friends on my mind. I'm in love. I'm in love with two girls at a time and they tens. That's why I got tens on my mind. I got M's. Got a lot of M's on my mind and my friends. Yeah, I keep my Ooh, and I just I just love putting it up right next to that Drake vocal because I, I'm just so happy I was able to bring this to y'all. I'm just so happy I was able to bring this video to y'all. Getting it as close as I feel like it could get. Okay, real quick with the ad-libs. Nobody cares. Let's go over it real fast. Um, you know, just using a J37 tape, 7.5 IPS, you know, kind of degrading the sound. Uh, Noah 40 Shabid, uh, Drake's engineer, he was known for actually, you know, using the Avid Lo-Fi. And literally, he was never doing a high-pass, uh, whatever, a low-pass filter. He was always doing, like, a Lo-Fi. He was actually literally degrading the whole mix. So people, you know, it's very interesting how people thought he was using, like, filters, but he was actually 
using the uh, the stock Pro Tools plugin Avid Lo-Fi to literally degrade the whole sound. So uh, I'm gonna go over that in another video. I'm gonna do a dedicated Noah 40 should be uh, video. So after that, you know, just cutting out some mid range and also extreme gating on the ad libs. Kind of, it kind of did like a time shift. It kind of cut off like the words a little bit. I liked it. Made it sound more abrupt. Sins. I got sins on my mind and some M's. Got a lot of M's on my mind and my friends. Yeah, I keep my friends on my mind. I'm in love. Kind of feels like the ad libs are a little kid trying to chase the school bus and the door is about to close on onto them, but they just get to squeak through. Kind of like Bart, you remember Bart and uh, Simpsons he used to be on his skateboard trying to chase the school bus and he just barely got in. Yeah, that's kind of how I like picture shit, you know, for the ad libs. Okay, Arvox bringing a little presents. We don't care. Uh, after that, I was literally crushing the shit out of the ad libs using the uh, Pre Child 670. I got sins on my mind and some M's. Got a lot of M's on my mind and my friends. Yeah, I keep my friends on my mind. I'm in love. And you know, sometimes I kind of see compression like a rubber band. So I'm using something like uh, the Puig 670. You know, when somebody got like, you know, $10,000 or hella ones and they about to go to the strip club or whatever, they like to take a rubber band and put it on the money to hold it. So sometimes compression can be like that too, you know, but the release time, depending on what time constant you use is how quick does the signal pop out of that rubber band? Kind of like how quick does somebody pop out the money out of the rubber band, you know, when they about to throw that bit. So I kind of see it like that too. After that, REQ, yeah, nothing crazy, and Meta Flanger, you know, sometimes you can use the same effect on the lead vocal and the ad libs to glue stuff together. And that's what I did here. Uh, also, the NLS bus used the Neve, uh, drove it all the way hard because I wanted to really make it sound lo fi, really just like deaden up these ad libs. And of course, we just had a basic uh, H delay, the basic R verb. And that's pretty much the end of the video for today. I didn't want to make this too long, but I hope we was able to cover all the ground. This was the Drake tutorial. And if you guys do want the template, the link gonna be down below. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Any uh, suggestions that y'all guys got for any different artists y'all wanna see, let me know. I'm more than happy to get to it. So we was able to show you today how to get that pro Drake main screen sound. Sound is so clear and so accurate to Drake. I feel like this was so, 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 so close to Drake. This was the absolute best I can do. And I know for a fact we got to Drake, I would say about 95%. 95%. Uh, that's what I'll give it, an a, a plus. So I just want to say thanks a lot for being a great part of my YouTube family. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Peace.